My name is Aaron Chandler and you're watching Coast Chai YouTube channel. The perfect place for theme park news, reviews and vlogs. After all, I've always got roller coasters running through my mind. <laughs> Hello all you beautiful thrill seekers, my name is Coach Charles Ogsterborn, but built for theme parks and welcome to the first of the three final videos of 2020. Now what a way to kick off today's final day of uploads 2020. This is a Halloween update, it's a massive video so stay tuned, get your popcorn, get your Diet Coke, sit back, relax and just enjoy this because we're going to be looking at the past 20 years of scare mazes and horror attractions at Thought Park Fright now. Now this doesn't include shows or the Screenplex Cinema or anything like that. This is just the pure mazes. The pure mazes. Um, so we're going to be discussing all, and I mean all, of the past mazes from 2002 right up until 2020. And yeah, this is going to be good. Uh, now, before we get started, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss another thrilling YouTube video. Also, guys, make sure you are going to the description down below where you can follow the Discord server, follow Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, and submit your video ideas using the Google Forms link in the description down below. And for now, guys, sit back, relax, and let's get into talking about all the past and current mazes at Thor Park Fright Nights over the last 20 years. So, let's go right from the beginning, right to the start, with 2002 and Freak Show 3D, which operated between 2002 and 2004. One of the first ever Fright Nights attractions, Freak Show 3D, saw your guests make way through a twisted and terrifying experience. After putting on a pair of 3D glasses, you were sent on your way through blood-curdling corridors filled with actors and gruesome 3D special effects. Freak, sh freak Show, not Freak Show, Freak Show, left the resort in 2004, taking all its horrors and gruesome ongoings on with it. Do you remember this Fright Nights classic? Now, obviously, I've never done Fright Nights, so it's, it's a bit weird of me making this video in, at all. But, Freak Show 3D, I've seen pictures of it, it looked amazing. Kind of gave me, sort of, uh, vibes of Barnageddon 3D. Um, and sort of what was going on with that. And, you know, I I was a huge fan of Barnageddon 3D. I see all the 3D effects during the scare maze. And I like the idea of a 3D effect during a scare maze. So, you know, I was a huge fan of this particular one. Uh, when I saw the pictures of it behind it. Even though I never experienced this particular maze. Um, you know, it was definitely a case of, I love the look of this, I wish I could have experienced this. Uh, but of course I was two years old, so I barely knew what the word horror meant uh, by the time I was two years old. But, you know, all of you that experienced Freak Show 3D, comment down below and tell me your memories because I want to share them on the channel. Uh, next up, The Freezer, operated between 2.02 and 04, same with The Freak Show. Uh, so The Freezer was definitely not for the faint of heart. Between 2002 and 2004, guests made their way through a terrifying frozen labyrinth filled with dead ends, smoke, mirrors, and of course, the unfortunate ones who called the freezer their home. The freezer has gone down as a Fright Nights classic after it closed in 2004, but did you get to experience the frightening frozen labyrinth during its time at the resort? Now, the freezer, again, it's one of those where you look at it and think, I wish I could have experienced it. Um, the freezer looked amazing, the actors looked incredible, there's the classic advert, teaser, promo, whatever you call it for the freezer, uh, we got that really dark voice, the freezer, so cool, it's scary. I can't replicate the voice because it's American for starters, but uh, it did look amazing, I mean the costumes and the teaser looked amazing, the old look of it was, ooh, it was chilly, <laughs> and um, not just chilly in terms of it was cold, it's chilly because it's terrifying. Um, but, you know, it looked like an amazing maze and it was the kickoff really for what was set to come over the next 20 years. Next up, Hellgate operated between 2005 and 2010. Did you dare enter the depths of the Hellgate mansion? Between 2005 and 2010, guests had to navigate its dark, twisting corridors and forgotten inhabitants as they tried to take their vengeance. They stopped at nothing and excused no one. The Amaze saw our guests plunged into the terrifying and horrible series of rooms, utilising a disused part of the X No Way Out queue line. Did you escape Hellgate Mansion, or did you get trapped in its twisted hallways forever? 
Again, this one. My goodness gracious me, it looks amazing. Um, Hellgate, five-year operation. Brilliant. Absolutely couldn't fault it from the looks of it. It, was, it looked brilliant. A disused part of X No Way Out queue line. Who remembers X No Way Out, eh? <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this looks a brilliant maze again. Uh, the twisted hallways that gave me the feel of the Hellgate Mansion. Um, it was brilliant, and you know, those of you who got to experience it again, comment down below your favourite memories, man, because this one was a twisted experience, unlike any other, I'm sure. Next up, uh, the Asylum, the longest running, or what's the longest running maze in Fright Night's history, 2005 to 2013. So a good eight years of operation for the Asylum, uh, the replacement to the freezer, of course. Uh, the Asylum saw guests enter the hair-raising labyrinth of cages and blood-splattered walls of an out-of-control Asylum. Running for nine seasons, the Asylum was one of the longest-running Fright Night's attractions. Although the Asylum may have closed its doors for good, we're sure the gruesome sights and sounds will be engraved into the minds of those lucky enough to escape for years to come. Did you miss this Fright Night's classic? Because from the looks of it, I surely did. Uh, now, actually, to be fair, when I was starting to become an enthusiast, I grew up looking at pictures and videos and vlogs of people that went into the asylum over its last couple two three years of operation as a maze uh, before this replacement came in which i'll talk about in a bit uh, but the asylum looked amazing the classic chainsaw finale in the reviews got people at the end um have you got any good memories of the asylum any funny memories any terrifying memories comment it down below guys because we want to share all your fright nights memories over the last 20 years uh, but the asylum terrifying gruesome experience and one that i would not wish on my worst enemy but i don't have enemies because i don't want to have enemies next up seven now this one's an interesting concept i like what thought part did with this between 2006 and 2011 seven was part of the fright nights lineup and saw guests come face to face with the seven deadly sins in all their gruesome glory it's like the Hollyoaks sin storyline wrath sloth pride lust envy gluttony and greed Guest senses were attached from all angles, leaving them reeling and desperate to repent. The maze was situated, get this, in the old Ranger County Arena, that is now where Darren Brown's ghost train is, and became a classic Fright Night's attraction after leaving the lineup in 2011. Did you experience Seven during its time at Fright Night's? Did you get to experience the deadly sins? Um, now... It's it was an it was a, a, an ingenious concept from Thought Park Fright Nights. It was an ingenious concept, and the Seven Deadly Sins, wonderful. I mean, I did a college project on the film Seven, um, but yeah, this was a wonderful looking project, and you know, I think Thought Park, from the looks of the pictures of the maze, did an awesome job with it. So I couldn't fault this one. Um, I think overall, I think that this would be a really good concept to bring back again with a new storyline, but I'll talk about that in 2021 because I do have a video plan next year um, for predicting what could be the Fright Nights lineup and what we could see. Uh, but overall, I think that Seven is a deadly experience. Next up, The Curse. Now, this operated between 2008 and 2012. Uh, so those of you who were brave enough to venture into the disturbing crime scene of the curse would have come face to face with the dark and terrifying secrets that had laid dormant for 50 years. If you're reading this, we're assuming you didn't disturb the curse and meet a watery grave. Do you miss this Fright Night's classic? Now, the curse was actually situated on a marquee on the Amity Beach. Now, this was an interesting one. Um, can they do a maze on the beach again in the future? I guess we'll have to see. But the curse, again, from the looks of it, really good concept. Love what Thought Pod did with this. Um, and I think overall, from the, from the looks of the reviews and from the sounds of the reviews, the acting quality was brilliant. The, the scenery was great. The way it was situated was great. Not on the outside, because it looked like a normal marquee on the beach. But from the inside of it, from the looks of it, it looks like the curse was a, an ingenious concept. Uh, so once again, props to Thought Park for that and comment down below your memories of the curse. Next up, now this is the longest running maze along with the Asylum. Uh, this is Saw Alive. Who remembers this one, man? I, I remember this one. I never got to experience it, but I remember seeing the opening of this a permanent attraction, then becoming a Fright Nights only attraction. I remember this all too well. So from the twisted minds that created the world's most terrifying roller coaster saw the ride came the world's most extreme live action horror maze. Uh, again, can't copy the voice because one, it's American. Um, 
Visitors come face to face with the sadistic Billy Puppet and face its nightmarish games, winding their way through this brilliantly themed multi roomed maze. With each room based on an iconic scene from the terrifying Saw films, guests had to test their nerve in some of the movie's most memorable traps, escaping freezing temperatures, braving foul stenches, and feeling their heart race in the darkness. Saw Alive was one of the longest running Fright Night's attractions, but in 2018, it was with a heavy heart we confirmed it would not be returning for the following year. So again, Twisted Games, terrifying experience, and overall, let the games begin. I think that's the best way to put it. Saw Alive, what an attraction. Comment down below your memories. Uh, next up, a one-year wonder. That's what we call this next one, a one-year wonder. The Dead End Terror Zone. Now read this. Did you dare enter the shadowy ride graveyard of Thought Park Resort's Dead End Terror Zone? A devastating virus, not the best timing, has been unleashed attacking all its path, turning them into ravenous undead. In 2010, guests explored the horrors of the Terror Zone as the undead lurked in the shadows and lurched out on their next unsuspecting victims. Did you escape untouched by the terrors of the virus, or did you become forever one of them? So again... Not the best time to talk about a virus, but um, this was this kind of had me like thinking of Zombie Scare Zone at Alton Towers, like their version of it. Um, but I think this one came before Zombie Scare Zone, so you know it kind of had those kind of vibes. But you know, overall, I think that this was like a one season wonder. But I think overall, it looked pretty all right, and um, I think that this would have been great for a long term. So comment down below. Did you enjoy Dead End Terror Zone in 2010? Did you want to see it continue for a little bit more? Uh, comment down below. Next up, two season wonder. <laughs> We've gone from one year to two year, but this one's an iconic one. This is Experiment 10. Um, unleashed back in 2011, where guests journeyed through a chilling and disturbing government test lab where the latest project, Experiment 10, had taken a sinister twist. Guests were subject to their deepest and darkest phobias, coming face to face with mutated test victims and all kinds of horrors within the facility. Rumour has it you can still hear the people screaming for a way out of Experiment 10's deadly glasp to this day. Did you witness the horrors of Experiment 10 and its short life at Fright Nights? Now again, this one is just... It was an icon. It was an absolute icon. People loved it. The reviews came in. It was fantastic. The look of it was stupendous. And should this return in a new form next year for the 20th anniversary? I guess we'll have to see. Uh, but comment down below your memories of escaping the deadly grasp of experiment 10 next up another one season wonder but again this one was a pretty good looking maze it was the passing now in 2012 guests were tried tested and sentenced to death in the passing a uniquely interactive intensely horrifying um experience that terrified even the bravest of thrill seekers to their core uh, using cutting edge techniques never seen before at the park, guests experienced the suffocating and claustrophobic terror of having their heads confined and their sight removed by a Hessian body bag as they faced the unknown horrors of the afterlife. Were you brave enough to book your time to die? Uh, so the passing again, bag over your head maze, looked amazing from the scenery and the pictures and the acting quality and overall it was a brilliant maze. Should they try the bag over your head star maze again in the future? We'll have to see. But comment down below, did you enjoy your sentencing to death via the passing? Uh, next up, uh, a maze that operated for three seasons. It was My Bloody Valentine in the Thought Park Arena. Uh, the last maze, actually, before the arena was taken down for Darren Brown's Ghost Train, along with the Chief Ranger Carousel. Uh, so between 2013 and 2015, because 2013 was the introduction of like the Lionsgate stuff, uh, so another maze came in, which we'll talk about in a bit. A couple of other stuff came in, and overall, this is the Lionsgate year, should we say. So between 2013 and 2015, I guess could relive one of the most terrifying films of all time. Ten years after a tragic mining accident in the town of Harmony, Harry Warden awoke from his coma on Valentine's Day and brutally murdered 22 people with his pickaxe before being killed. Years on, there was a killer on the loose. Has Harry returned? Visitors found themselves in a horrific hospital ward before having to negotiate their way through the tunnels of an abandoned mine, negle neglected shacks and a pitch black forest. Very exciting stuff from that one. And, you know, overall, My Bloody Valentine was a brilliant looking maze. I saw the vlogs from it on the opening of Fright Nights. And, you know, I think overall, um, My Bloody Valentine looked amazing. The Lionsgate did really, really well with Thought Park Fright Nights on this particular maze. Uh, rave reviews while it was there. And uh, overall, just, 
I, I, comment down below if you miss this. Comment down below if you miss all the Lionsgate stuff. Next up, uh, the first and the uh, and the currently only attraction to have two separate runs at the park. One between 2013 and 2016, and then 2018 to 2019. So, a couple of years absence after the first run. It is, of course, Blair Witch, uh, or the Blair Witch Project. Venture deep into the terrifying wilderness and battle the elements of your fight to take on the evil that lurks beyond the darkness. As you'll know from the lore of the Blair Witch, you must remember, never spend the night, never look with your eyes open, never turn away from the corner. So that's good advice. <laughs> Unlike those famous film students in the haunted woods, you won't have the camera to record where you are. So if you get lost, no one will know. The doors to the Blair Witch Extreme Race opened at dusk when the woods around Thorpe Park sink into darkness. When you know there's something evil hiding in the woods, dare you enter after nightfall? That's a very interesting statement there. Um, but yeah, Blair Witch, really good. Uh, the second run was even better as well. Uh, from the sounds of it and from the looks of the, uh, of the pictures of the maze and the vlogs and stuff like that. Um, you know, Blair Witch had two decent runs at the park. And, you know, overall, I thought it was a really good looking attraction. So, I think Thought Park, again, did really well with this one. Next up, Cabin in the Woods, 2013 to 2016. You guys know this one. This is where Black Mirror Labyrinth is now going to be it's from 2021 onwards. Um, a UK first. Guests were entered to choose their own fate in an award-winning maze. So disturbing and disorientating, they were desperate to escape. But the route to safety was far from easy. Between 2013 and 2016, guests could enter experience a frightening live recreation from the groundbreaking satirical horror film. Visitors toured the seemingly innocent rustic cabin, within which had a secret facility that unleashed nightmarish hideous beings. It was a fully immersive, brilliantly themed maze where visitors could influence the outcome and come face to face with the nightmare and devastation that was the cabin in the woods. Did you brave it during your time at Fright Nights? Comment down below if you did. And uh, from the looks of this one, again, amazing. They could choose their own fate. It was no, it was a um, it was like a free roaming maze, should we say? Usually the style with the traditional maze, like hands on your shoulders, you know, conga line through the maze. Um, this was free roam, choose your own fate, and um, what a wonderful idea it was as well. So uh, props to Thought Park for this one as well. Next up, the replacement to the long running asylum, Studio 13 back in 2014. Again, a one season wonder. Have you ever wanted to become a movie star? Then you're sure to audition for this blood sort blockbuster and step behind the scenes for the tour of the UK's most evil film studios. <laughs> After 13 years making horrifying productions, the deranged director opened up his brand new studio to horror fans for one night only. As the lights flickered, a film crew were on hands to direct the action through a maze of bloody makeup booths, deserted motel themed sets and hanging body bags. But true horror lurked behind the movie making and it wasn't long before visitors realised there was no happy ever after. Studio 13 and the deranged director came and went in what seemed like the blink of an eye. Did you get to experience the horrors of Studio 13 during the short time at the event? Comment down below if you did. Um, but lights, camera, action, we're all gonna die. Um, that was the whole sort of gist of this maze. That was the whole, that was like, that's like the one statement I could say makes up the theme of this maze. Lights, camera, action, we're all gonna die. Um, it had the iconic chainsaw from the asylum as well, which was a nice nostalgic touch. Um, but I think overall Studio 13 was a blockbuster unlike any other for Fright Nights and again it looked amazing and the reviews were really good from it as well. Next up, an interesting attraction, not a maze of sorts, but this attraction has been operating for a good few years, uh, last appearing the previous year in 2019. It is of course the 2015 opened Containment. Face your fears and make the ultimate timed escape from each locked room. Working in groups, you are locked inside four frightening rooms inspired by some of the UK's worst nightmares. Your task? Find the antidote to the fast-spreading infection beyond Swarm Island. Achieve this by breaking the codes and making your way through each chilling challenge. But remember, you've just got 20 minutes to escape the facility and re-enter the theme park. So there's no time to waste panicking. This is no team-building escape game. This is an escape room nightmare. This featured four locked rooms, but unlikely sparkly TV escape room games, this is real life, in captivity. Your grand prize will be to survive. Each scary escape room challenge will prey on your deepest, darkest fears, and it could be difficult to concentrate on solving puzzles with blood gushing all around you. 
What else do you fear? The dentist chair being buried alive in a deep hole underground? Maybe your biggest fear is your algebra homework. I know maths was my biggest fear because I could never pass it. <laughs> um, so yeah, containment. What a attraction. What an attraction. You know, this Halloween escape room promised to get your heart racing. And, um, you know, this was completely different, unlike anything they've ever done before. And overall, just amazing absolutely incredible and i couldn't rate it even more it was it looked amazing it looked absolutely incredible completely different to what they've done in the past and uh, overall those of you who've experienced containment and got out alive multiple times comment down below your thoughts on this halloween escape room next up 2015 to 2017 the big top and uh, now in 2015 they unleashed the most iconic scare mazes or one of the most iconic the big top the greatest scare on earth Guests twisted their way through this scare maze set in an abandoned carnival on the island's Amity Beach. While former entertainers of the once famous Figaro Brothers Carnival came back to life, those haunts who dared to trespass. The Big Top has gone down in Fright Night's history as an all-time fan favourite, but did you get to experience it during its three years at the resort? Now, this has always been speculated to return over the last couple of years, last two, three years. It's always been speculated to come back. And... Will it come back for the anniversary next year? I don't know. I, I, I really don't have a clue. But it would be nice if it did. Because, you know, obviously I, I've, I'll have i speak about it in the channel trailer. Which I'll release after this video. Um, you know, I've always wanted to go to Fright Night. It's 20th anniversary next year. Perfect time to do it, hopefully. And, you know, I think overall, I think it would be nice to see Big Top come back. Uh, I think it's an all-time fan favourite. I think it would be brilliant to see it back. Looked amazing from when it was operating. Uh, but overall, should be interesting. We move on to the first of two mazes that are currently operating since this year. And that is, of course, Platform 15. It's 2016, 2020. Now, whether it's its last year or not this year, not too sure. Um, but let's speak about Platform 15. It's the end of the line, of course. Uh, depart on a one-way ticket and track along the overgrown railway line. Of course, the old Canada's Creek railway train was used in this. Uh, the last known route of the vanished locomotive, the notorious Sleeper Express. Also known as the Canada Creek Railway. Uh, don't lose your tracks and risk disturbing the haunted souls that were once aboard, or you may just experience the same chilling fate. Can you outrun what lies at the end of the line, or will your journey terminate here at Platform 15? Very exciting maze, looked amazing. Uh, from this year especially, I loved how they've done it with the distancing and the restrictions in place and stuff like that. And overall, it'd be nice to see Platform 15 come back in a, in a completely new way. New extended storyline, uh, new theming, extended story uh, involved with the scares as well. And, you know, it'd be great to see like an overhaul of this particular maze if it is going to come back for the anniversary next year. So, very exciting stuff. Now, 2017 and 2018 were two particular years of an AMC network show, The Walking Dead. Two new mazes in 2017 and a new one in 2018. Uh, so, of course, The Walking Dead Living Nightmare first stop, which operated between 2017 and 2019. And now trapped in this Halloween maze, there's nowhere to run and the seal is coming. Nightmares become reality as you find yourself with other survivors at the terrifying mercy of the notorious saviors. On the brink of imminent death, relive the horror of key iconic moments from AMC's The Walking Dead. Will you escape the clutches of Negan and the saviors in this horrifying Halloween maze experience? Now this particular one, again, is amazing. It sounds incredible. Um... I'm starting to lose my voice because it's amazing. Uh, but Living Nightmare, incredible. Of course, now in that location, it will be Black Mirror Labyrinth, the permanent attraction starting next year at the park. And, you know, I think overall from the looks of it, Living Nightmare was definitely one to watch, in my opinion. I think that overall, it looks incredible. And uh, I think overall, it looked amazing. And I think that the, the way they've done it is incredible. And um, I, I reckon they, they had a good shot with that one. I think they had a really good... Um, sort of overlook with this one so overall i love the look of living nightmare now the second one was a one season wonder this is walking dead sanctum this was not highly rated at all those who arrive survive in 2017 guests followed in the footsteps of the survivors on their journey to refuge uh but all was not as it seemed you either had to make your way past the sanctuary past the roaming walkers or risk being captured did you survive or did you become one of the walking dead now sanctum like i said not highly rated at all it was a one season wonder um, using some old shipping containers at the back towards the swarm, uh, or sort of behind the swarm on the long path. Uh, but overall, you know, it was one season wonder. It did its best. It did its best to scare. 
but overall it just wasn't, you know, it just, it, it, I don't know, it just, it just wasn't, you know, uh, the best of, of times for that maze. In 2018, they brought in a brand new one to replace it in the lineup, which is Walking Dead Do or Die. The road to safety is within reach as you run the gauntlet through the compound in this live action horror maze. After a promising beginning aboard a school bus to safety, you must follow the footsteps of survivors on your journey to refuge. But be warned, when you meet the local residents, you can't trust everyone. Take it from us, zombie survival is never as easy as it seems. So, Walking Dead Do a Die, again, a very, very highly rated attraction. And overall, I think that Do or Die definitely deserves its, its praise for what it did in the two years it was there. And uh, overall, I, I've got nothing against it from the reviews and the looks of it. Now, two mazes that had one season wonders in 2018. First of all, Dead Creek Woods. The previously pleasant surroundings of Dead Creek Woods had taken an apocalyptic turn in 2018. Did you brave the unknown horrors of Dead Creek Woods in 2018? Now, this one was a nice popular tourist spot famed for stunning natural beauty. Decaying Woods became infamous for an entirely different reason. It was up to you to navigate this formerly thriving scene in town and make it out the other side without becoming infected and doomed yourself. Uh, so overall, again, Dead Creek Woods, one season wonder, did its best, got mixed reviews, and overall served its purpose. Now, people call this the most, the worst maze in Fright Night's history. Vulcan Peak. Uh, the tribal lords of the jungle were summoned and the harvest moon of October, their power, the strongest. Hooded and marched into the depths of the wild, you had to rely on your primal instincts to keep your wits about you and make out with your flesh and bones intact. Vulcan Peak may have only been with Fright Nights for one season, but the jungle drums and horrors of the overgrowth are sure to become stuck in our guest minds for years to come. Again, this was the, the, the lowest rated um, maze, should we say, in the history of Fright Nights. So, you know, no, not many people would miss this, but I, I tell you something now. The storyline of Vulcan Peak, if I can give it its praise, the storyline of it and the whole sound of it did give it potential to be great in the future. If they kept with it and kept making massive changes to it to make it better, I reckon they could have made massive improvements to it and made it an even better experience. So uh, it did have its potential, uh, but it was there for one season and not many people miss it. But overall, it's 50-50. Next up, 2019 brought us Creek Freak Massacre, located in the Logger's Leap Station in Q-Line. How much wood could a wood chop chop of a wood chop could chop you? That's the phrase for it. <laughs> uh, this in the old abandoned Creekwood Sawmill is no haunted house attraction. It's a home to real life family of deranged lumberjacks. Um, we're done playing scary games. This is the most extreme thought part scare maze ever opened. And it, and it was right from the reviews, from the, from the vlogs, from the POV, from the looks of it. It was the scariest maze they've ever done. And overall, I think it looked alright. I think it looked amazing. Better than alright. It it's astonishing. I hope it comes back for the anniversary in 2021. And um, we get the full maze experience. Uh, so hopefully we do get that. And um, overall, I think Creek Freak Massacre still has a long way to go. I think it still has a few years left in it. Uh, not in terms of potential, but I mean it has a good few years left in it. Because I think it's going to be one of those long-running mazes for the park again. Finally, 2020 brought us a brand new maze. Roots of Evil. Unearth the horrors that lurk within a forsaken forest and prepare to meet the terrifying abominations that dwell within. Move discreetly through the dark undergrowth and pray your presence goes unnoticed or risk becoming one of the forgotten forever. So Roots of Evil sounded amazing. It looked amazing. The reviews were quite decent. And uh, if it comes back for the anniversary in the next year, then who knows? Maybe they'll make some changes to it and some big overhauls to it. But overall, from Roots of Evil and from the past 20 years, Fright Nights was one terrifying place. So there we go. I could take a breath of relief and sip some drink after this video. Um, not an orange juice, I'll probably get a beer out of the fridge. Um, but there we go, that's the last 20 years of Fright Nights, past mazes. Now, we spoke about the past, what about the future? Well, that's coming up in its separate video, so stay tuned for that in 2021. But for now, guys, thanks for taking a trip with me during the past 20 years of Fright Nights mazes. My name is Coast Chow, keep living the coastline. I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a fright-tastic day.